Warren State Hospital, an insider's view through history's lens, presented by the Warren County Historical Society of Warren, Pennsylvania. The Warren State Hospital was originally called Hospital for the Insane. The name was changed to Warren State Hospital in 1927. The Warren State Hospital was established by an act approved in 1873 called Public Law 333. The Warren County Commissioners purchased 330 acres for $33,000 which is just over three quarters of a million dollars today. Construction began in 1874, but because the work was so specialized and large scale, the three original buildings weren't finished until 1882. The first patients were admitted on December 1st, 1880, before the buildings were even completed. This is one of the earliest photos of the main building, the building that most associate with the Warren State Hospital. An early photo of the superintendent and the board of trustees shows some familiar names in Warren County history, including Lansing Dittmars Wetmore, a prominent citizen who served as president judge from 1871 to 1881. Let's take an historical tour of the buildings. Some you will recognize because they are still standing. Some are long gone. The main building, also called the center building, is the most prominent and memorable structure of the Warren State Hospital. It was one of the original three buildings constructed. Its architectural beauty is amazing, especially when you consider the fact that construction actually began on both ends and eventually met in the middle. This was done to ensure that patient dormitories were finished in time. Let's take a look inside. The craftsmanship and details are as impressive on the interior as on the exterior. You will find that taking photos that include patients was common back then. It is certainly different today. This is one of the many long corridors in the main building. Here's another interior shot featuring some patients. This men's ward apparently also had a special visitor. The main building was constructed with a number of beautiful parlors. The main building also featured an ornate chapel. Prayer services were held daily at 8 p.m. and two full services were held on Sundays. Here is a more recent photo of the beautiful chapel, which is located on the third floor of the rear of the building. The room is still there, but is no longer used as a chapel since the construction of the Interfaith Chapel in the 1970s. The beautiful windows can be seen from Hospital Drive. Dr. 
Dr. Guth, a name you will hear again soon, is seen presiding over a service in the beautiful chapel. Here, patients are seen attending a service, men on one side, women on the other. The Sunderland building is the only original building that is no longer standing as it was torn down in 1958. The Sunderland building was used for many purposes, one of which was laundry. Sunderland was also used as a powerhouse, storage, and employee dormitories. It was named after John Sunderland, the architect of the building. The final of the three original buildings is the pump house, also called the gas and water works. The structure is still standing and is located right along State Street. The coach house was built in the 1880s. It can still be seen today close to the Warren Commons intersection on Route 62. The gatehouse was originally just two small rooms where the gatekeeper lived. Additions were put on in 1899 and again in the 1950s and 60s. It is still standing on State Street across from the main gate entrance. The nurse's home was built in 1897 as a residence for female employees. It was constructed of yellow brick behind the center building along Hospital Drive. A 1933 addition put on 60 new rooms. Nurses were required to tidy up their room each day before reporting to duty, and the rooms were inspected daily. The building was demolished in 1987. In 1890, a farm located just north of the state hospital was purchased, a purchase that included this farmhouse. The farmhouse that had belonged to the Sanfords became known as Hygieia Hall. The purchase of the Sanford farm gave the state hospital an additional 58 acres. Hygieia Hall was used to house female patients as a type of halfway house. A brick building was built right next to the Hygieia House and used as an annex to the building. This building is currently used by the Department of Environmental Protection. In 
in 1893, the family of Emily Eckert gave $5,000 to the hospital to be used to provide entertainment for the inmates, or patients as we would say today. The money was put toward construction of this building made of natural stone. The Eckert building was to be used by women and housed a Turkish bath, rec room, and even a museum. Before it was demolished in 1981, the Eckert building was used for occupational therapy. Kerwin Hall was essentially the male version of the Eckert building, containing Turkish baths, a reading room, and museum to be used by men and was located directly behind the main building. Kerwin Hall was demolished in 1962 to make room for a new kitchen and dining room building. Those familiar with the Warren State Hospital today might recognize the name Kerwin because there is a newer building on campus that now bears the name. The Kerwin buildings were named after Dr. John Kerwin, superintendent of the state hospital from 1881 to 1900. Young people of today might recognize the name Farm Colony and associate it with baseball and softball and maybe some businesses or offices located at the Farm Colony Complex. They may not realize that its eclectic history actually begins with the Warren State Hospital. In 1897, the Warren State Hospital purchased 173 acres a mile north of the hospital and quickly began construction on their new project. The farm colony would house patients and serve as a farming area, having a kitchen, infirmary, and a large chicken coop. The principal structure of the farm colony was built in 1900. After the state hospital stopped using the farm colony, it was used as a branch of Edinburgh from 1971 to 1979. Many Warren area residents attended. The buildings were eventually abandoned and fell into disrepair. This picture encompasses a few facets of the farm colony's history as it features both a large chicken coop from its early days as state hospital property and also shows ball fields used by people to this day. The buildings have since been torn down. The Seneca building was built in the early 1900s as housing for male patients and was later used as apartments for hospital staff. The Seneca building is still located along State Street. North Annex, just north of the main building, was built in 1906 to house patients. Contagious building, also called the Pest House, was built in 1915 to be used to quarantine contagious patients. The little house located along the tracks, now the bike hike trail, contained bedrooms, a kitchen, and a bathroom.
It was later used as a residence before being torn down in 1985. Therapeutic Activities Building, also called TAB, was built to be used for things like recreation and occupational therapy and still stands today. Built in the early 1900s, Roseland was used as a steward's residence and later physician's residence. The stately home still stands and is the first building on the left as you go on Hospital Drive from Jackson Run. The infirmary building, as the name implies, initially housed the sick patients, particularly those with tuberculosis, and was later used for an adolescent unit, masonry and electric shops, and administration. It was located between the laundry and keystone buildings, both of which still stand. The infirmary, however, was demolished in 1982. Mason Hall was built as a home for male employees and later was used as a clothing and sewing center. Mason Hall was located near the greenhouses and was demolished in 1973. It is now a parking lot and roadway. The state hospital's powerhouse contained steam-driven Skinner engines to generate power to all of the buildings on campus. Throughout time, it has used a variety of energy sources such as coal, natural gas, oil, and even sawdust. The striking smokestack was demolished in 1971. While the building has changed over time with additions and reductions, the original section is still in use today. Here you can get a good idea of where it is located along the railroad tracks, now the bike hike trail. The Stone Building, named after Rufus Stone, was built in 1931 as a reception hospital or admissions unit. The first floor held newly admitted patients. The second and third floor were both used for medical and surgical purposes. The medical purposes include radiology, this building ceased medical operations in 1978 when codes changed. The beautiful building is still in use today and has been used by entities such as the Warren County School District's Learning Enrichment Center and Warren County Assistance Office. This quaint building is the paint shop, built originally as a flat roofed structure in 1933. The peaked roof was added in the 1980s. The paint shop is located by the intersection with the Warren Commons complex. This is actually the second building built specifically for laundry. Both buildings remain and stand next to each other. The building's large room was quite the factory-like operation. The Guth Building, built in 1936, was named after Dr. Guth, the man shown earlier preaching in the main building's chapel. The imposing building was a home for male employees, for many years until the hospital stopped providing employee housing. It has been home to the adolescent unit and administration offices 
and still stands proudly on Hospital Drive. The Mitchell Building, named after Dr. Harry Mitchell, the hospital's fifth superintendent, was originally named the Building for Disturbed Women. When it opened in 1942, it could hold 270 patients and was home to disturbed women until 1971. It eventually housed the forensics unit, which has since closed, but the building is still used. Among the most rumored subjects when it comes to the Warren State Hospital is the underground tunnels that connect some of the buildings. This particular photo shows construction of the tunnel that connects the main building to the stone building. The tunnels were constructed in the 1920s and 30s, largely by patient labor. It's no secret that Warren County is prime oil territory. This panoramic view includes the main building and the coach house, both of which remain today, giving us a sense of where some of the derricks were once located. The main building can be seen behind this derrick. Oil was first discovered on Warren State Hospital property in 1881. Some of the money derived from the oil was used to fund the chapel on the third floor of the main building, which we saw earlier. Thousands of people have worked at the Warren State Hospital since it opened in 1880. These nurses accompanied patients from Danville State Hospital who had been displaced due to a fire. The man on the side is unidentified, but he certainly adds to the interest of this picture, doesn't he? Most employees were originally required to live on campus and were only allowed to venture into town on specific days and times. Other rules for nurses who worked at the state hospital at its inception included the fact that no visitors were permitted while the nurses were on duty and they were required to stand when speaking to the hospital administrators. Nurses were only permitted to send 24 articles of clothing to be laundered each week, excluding handkerchiefs, of course. The state hospital employed many people who were not in the medical or psychiatric profession, as well, in order to keep the facility running. It took a lot of work to feed the many patients and employees alike. The bakery had quite an impressive brick oven.
and the pantry could hold a lot of bread. Milk was another important staple. The Warren State Hospital began admitting patients on December 1, 1880. At the end of the first year, there were 225 patients, 46 men and 179 women. Cost per patient was three to $10 a week, depending on their ability to pay and how much trouble they caused. Patients were admitted for a variety of reasons, such as mania, dementia, addiction, and brain trauma. Other, quote, causes of insanity included excitement, jealousy, menstrual disorder, overjoy, religious excitement, worry, excessive use of tobacco, nostalgia, and menopause. Alcoholism was the most frequent found cause. Patients were admitted at the Erring Court. Many forms of treatments were given to the patients. Hydrotherapy was one form of treatment. While at the hospital, patients participated in many activities, including many outdoor activities along and on the adjacent Conowongo Creek. Bridges were constructed so that patients and staff could make use of the islands in the creek. A fountain was in what was called the duck pond for people to enjoy. Live music was provided for weekly dances, an idea introduced by Dr. Guth, who was mentioned earlier. Something that many people don't know is that the state hospital had its very own miniature golf course. Field days made for fun times. Here we see a wheelbarrow race. And an actual wheelbarrow race. Patients participated in physical education. The men, you might notice, are wearing matching attire, including neckties. Warren State Hospital even had its own baseball team. Greenhouses were avidly used. In fact, there are still greenhouses on the property today.
Patients even put on theatrical productions. The auditorium was state of the art. Those who were interested in crafts were provided a wide variety of opportunities, including weaving, The Warren State Hospital is still a working facility today, centuries later, and boasts a beautiful campus with a rich history. Thank you for taking an historic journey with us through the Warren State Hospital, an insider's view through history's lens. We hope you join us again. The Warren County Historical Society is located at 210 Fourth Avenue in Warren, Pennsylvania. You can visit us at www.warrenhistory.org.